Hello, hello, and welcome to the Notary Life with Kimmy podcast. I am also one of the trainers with Notary Educators, which includes myself, Kimmy Nunnally, Angela Johnson, and Alexis Franklin. We each own our own very successful notary businesses and teach notaries in all 50 states to be great and grow their own business. We will discuss general notary work, apostilles, ink fingerprinting, and the duties of a notary signing agent, and much, much more. For all of your notary needs, please visit notaryeducatorsllc.com. We hope you enjoy the show, and we wish you much success. Hello, hello, and welcome to Notary Life with Kimmy. I am Kimmy, and I am here with Alexis. I want to introduce yourself, Alexis. Hello, it's Alexis, Mobile Notary Services by Alexis. And Alexis and I are part of the Notary Educators team, which help you to be a great notary, have a great foundation, and build it all the way to the top. And um, tonight we are discussing money everybody's favorite thing welcome to those who are here we appreciate you being here we'll give youtube a few minutes to notify people and then we're going to get into it because i don't like to hold people longer than we have to especially you came on time so i want you to get what you need and tonight's topic again is we're talking about the money and about um should a client prepay we're talking about paying a deposit and refunding money this is a part one of part two I believe part two will be on Friday live. So join us then. Hello to everyone that's joining us. Welcome to the live. Welcome. Tonight we're talking about the money. Hey, Tanya from Florida. Uh, Facebook did not work today, guys. Unfortunately, that was a StreamYard issue, not a Notary Life with Kimmy issue. Hi, Tara. How are you? New Hello. notary. Scared to death. Don't know where to start. <laughs> okay, we're going to answer a few questions, too, after we talk about tonight's topic. So I'm going to get into it because you guys are here. As I stated before, you're on time. So those who are late will have to go back and watch the replay. But we do welcome you on the replay. So let's get right into it. So the first, again, we're talking about tonight's topic is all about the money. This is part one of two. And the first um, question, these are frequently asked questions that we receive. The first one is, should you make the client prepay for an appointment? Hi, W. Kirkland. What's going on? Hey, Sharon Robinson. Welcome, welcome. Missouri's in the house. Yeah, so um, the first question, these are frequently asked questions about payments. This is part one of two. Part two. Hi, Brian. Part two will be on Friday. Um, hi, Tara from North Charlotte's in the house, North Carolina. So the first question is, should you make a client prepay? What do you guys think? Put a one in the chat if you think they should repay. Put a two, I mean, prepay rather. Put a, uh, I got replay and repay on the mind. Um, if you think they should prepay for services, put a one in the chat for me. Put a one. Hey, Marcel, put a two if you think they should not. And now we're going to tell you what we do. Welcome to everyone that is here. So, Carlene said, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Carlene, you want your money up front? Hi, Marjorie. <laughs> Carlene said, yes, we are collecting all funds before we get there. Marcel says it depends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, Brian says it depends also on the service. And I'm in total agreement. So, number... <laughs> Tara said at least the uh, travel amount. So we got a, a mix of mixed opinions there about should you have the client prepay or not. So I normally do not have my client prepay. Again, this is my business practice. We're going to ask Alexis what she does. I do not have them prepay because I'm not big on prepaying for services. And as a notary for myself, the main reason I don't have them prepay is because I don't want to have to refund them their money. I might get there for whatever reason and I decide, you know what? I'm not doing this. Maybe the client is not as alert as I would like them to be. Maybe their ID is not what they stated. Maybe the client and I disagree on the pricing that, you know, because sometimes they'll tell you they have two documents and you get there's really five. So now the price has to change. They may not want to pay it. So I'm not too big on um, asking for prepayment. 
Now, I will ask in these particular instances, and again, we're going to let Alexa share her thoughts. Welcome to everybody joining us. Um, I will ask for a prepayment or at least a partial if I am doing an apostille. I ask for part of the money up front at least to cover their FedEx expenses and my, my time for processing. I will also ask for prepayment if I'm going to a hospital, if I have to go to a jail. Because watch my video about the jail signing. I was on my way there and they canceled. And I, it was 45 minutes from my house. So you guys know I didn't like that. So I'm not big on asking for prepayment. What do you do, Alexis? Do you ask for prepayment? No, normally no. I have a few instances. Like you said, like I still, yes, um, definitely. And then I just had a situation where a man called. He needed a document done for his for his mother. He was down in Columbus. His mom was here locally near me. He was telling me that he was going to be the one to pay. And, you know, he wanted me to go to his mom, get it done, and so forth. So in that instance, I did ask him to go ahead and prepay just because I didn't want to do the job, leave, and then have to figure out payment. You know, that's, I don't know these, I don't know these people. So uh, just to be on the safe side, of course, I did ask him to pay up front. So any special circumstances like that, yes, but normal day to day, no, I don't. That is definitely one that I'm going to ask for prepayment. That is definitely one that I'm going to ask for prepayment. If somebody say, I'm going to pay for the, oh, my boyfriend going to pay you. Or my ex-husband, my ex-wife. Oh, your ex is going to pay me right now. <laughs> I'm not driving to your house. And then she gets decides she mad at you or, you know, I didn't had that happen before. Oh, he won't sign it. He said he ain't coming out. What? I'm already sitting here. What do you mean he's not coming out? So certain instances like that, yeah. Or they'll have you, I'll pay for it. Can you go to my, this is a really good one though. You go to the ex's place, divorce documents especially. Can you drive over there? And she already got the paper. I need her to sign it. And she looking like, what? <laughs> so yeah, definitely on my divorce signings too. Let me include that one. If it's not the actual signer and they paying for an ex, yeah, we want prepayment. Okay, so let's move on to our next question. We want to welcome everybody that is here. Hi, Chris. What is going on out there? So our next question frequently asked about money and collecting payments. Again, this is part one. If you've already missed some of it, go back and catch the replay. Part two will be on Friday night. The next frequently asked question is, should the client pay a deposit to hold their space? So it's a little similar, but... The reason I added that that way, because some people are of the mindset, well, even the book on my, put you on my calendar, you need to pay me at least $15 to book and get on their calendar because you're holding a space that could go to someone else. So again, I personally don't do that. Um, I probably should, but I don't. Because again, it's just, I like my business uncomplicated. I really do. I don't do anything that's complicated in my personal life, in my business. So I don't want everybody sending me $15 to get on my calendar. And then every hour, somebody saying, oops, found somebody else. Oops, don't need you. Oops, 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 oops. No, 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 no. And I'm refunding money all day. No. Sometimes that's what I call the cost of doing business. Um, and you don't want to run your business so tight. To me, this is my business, how I run mine. And you can run yours the way you want. But I don't even want to run my business or my schedule so tight that if the person has to cancel, I'm going to have a hissy fit. You know, I'm like, oh, that just that just messed up my whole everything because this person canceled. No, you always want to have a little bit of reserve, you know, in the bank, a couple, you know, something where if somebody canceled a $50 job, so what? You know? Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Tanya. Hit the like button, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tanya. Yeah, so I don't want to, um, you know, again, create more work for myself, you know. And you got people, sometimes I've seen notary schedule every 30 minutes, but everybody's sending $15, $15, $15. And again, you got to go back. No, no, no. So what's your thoughts on that, uh, Alexis? Um, having the client prepay a deposit to hold their space. Same thing. Just me doing this for so long now. I don't really see a need. Majority of the time, once somebody tell me that they're coming, they're usually coming. Sorry, that's the toy. But usually when, you know, when they say they're coming, they're coming because they need you so bad in most instances. So 
I don't really have to have a deposit at all. Now, there have been a couple times where somebody said they were coming and an hour went by, call them like, hey, and they're like, oh, I got busy. That was far and few between. But just like you said, I make it so it's not going to ruin my day. It's like, okay, whatever, keep it pushing. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm with you. I'm exactly with you on that one. I actually had that happen today. A client called me, let's say it was 11 o'clock. He come rolling up at 1130. And I was just like, maybe he's not coming. And I was pretty clear. He said, I'll be there within 10 minutes. So that really bugs me because that's my time, right? Time is money. Like in the Temptations movie. And she said, my money. (laughs) So that being the case, um, I was livid. But it was okay. But I think sometimes they, they think I'm a brick and mortar location that I'm just sitting here and they can just roll up when they get ready. And I let them know sometimes um, I'm mobile also. So you do need to kind of let me know what time you're coming. So again, I don't have them to, you know, leave a deposit, $15 and all that, because I like to uncomplicate my business, keep it simple. Tara is asking along these lines, she said, Is there a notary? booking site like when you pay a deposit for your hair services excuse my ignorance you all i'm super new tara 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 we don't do ignorance over here baby you can ask whatever questions you want to okay nobody's ignorant we all started somewhere so don't even let those words come out your mouth okay whatever you have to ask you are new and it's a valid question okay and we don't mind answering them quite frankly we answer a lot of questions that we answered before but that's what we do. We're trainers. We're teachers. We're not we're not those people. OK, so no question is an ignorant question. Now, back to the question. So, Alexis, what do you recommend for booking and to have them pay the deposit? What do you use? I mean, I know you don't do that, but I know they can um, pre book on Google. So would you like to talk about that a little bit? Maybe your new course? Yeah. So you can use like a third party booking site. Google allows you to input a website into um, this area and they can click on the website and it'll take them to your booking site so in that case we use a third party uh, website and I haven't used anything but appointments which is through Square and it's called appointments that's the name of the app and you can send invoices and uh, make you know put people in your calendar and stuff all within this app so that works for me and um, like I said it connects to Google and then just like Kimmy said, um, I did just drop a new course. Course is all about Google My Business, start to finish. Uh, if you started your if you started your Google page already and you need to maximize it, this course is for you. If you haven't started your Google page, it walks you step by step, beginning to end, on how to get started, how to maximize your page for the notary business specifically. It's good for any business, but specifically for the notary business. So it is amazing, and we are doing 60% off until Friday for it. And use code Google. You can go to notaryeducatorsllc.com for it. And the 60% off is on Alexis's course only. Yeah. Uh, the other courses are 50% off the self-paced courses. Um, those are all the other ones, Notarize Like a Pro, et cetera, Ink Fingerprinting, I9, um, How to Build Your Business. All of those are 50% off. Coupon code is WIN23, W-I-N-2-3, WIN23, and that is at um, notaryeducatorsllc.com. Again, that's notaryeducatorsllc.com. Hey, Latoya. Hey, Tara. Tara is so correct. This is a safe space, a safe place. So, yes, you do not have to feel crazy putting your questions over here. Whatever you need, we got you. Hey, LaToya, welcome. You caught the live. We're so excited you're here. So um, our last question, guys, frequently asked part one about money is do you issue refunds? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Welcome, everybody who's here and joining us. What are your thoughts about that? Have you ever had to issue a refund or you, do you think you should issue refunds? Let's put a one if you think you should or if you've had to. And a two, if you think never refund, final sale, what's your thoughts? One, if you would give a refund. Two, if you think it should be final sale on services. Hey, Alice from Nebraska. Welcome, welcome. What's your thoughts on that? Tanya said, yes, you should give a refund if requested. 
Let's see a couple more, then we're going to tell you what we think. Should you give a refund on services if requested? Or two, no final sale. What's your thoughts? Do, 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 do. I see. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Any other any other takers? So we'll move on so we don't keep y'all. So I say if they ask me for a refund, if they're deserving of a refund, I'm going to give them a refund. Even on my courses. Hey, Monique. Depends. I totally agree. I totally agree. It depends. Even on my courses. Now, don't y'all get crazy because I ain't about to be refunding. But if I really feel that someone is not satisfied, I'm going to give them their money back because that's just the person I am. I'd rather have peace in my business. I keep it simple. And now I'm going to refund you, but I'm going to be very clear. You will no longer have access to anything I do because clearly we're not for you. I had that happen before. Somebody asked me for a refund. I'm, I'm going to put it out there, y'all. I'm being very, very transparent. Somebody asked me for a refund on one of my courses. And they didn't took the course, watched the course, went to another Facebook group the day after they told me that they didn't like the course and put in there, oh, I'm an expert. Y'all know how to notarize. And I was like, I bet you do. You didn't watch my whole course and told me you ain't learned nothing. Little did they know I was in another Facebook group. So I was livid. There are no words to describe how upset I was. I was turning red. Because now you're in another group. So I'm like, okay, the professional in me was like, okay, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. So I did block the person from everything. You can no longer be in my Facebook group. You can no longer be on my IG. I don't want anything else to do with you because clearly I'm, and I might be wrong. So I know y'all going to trip out. I know. But this is how I felt. This is my business and I get to run it how I want to, just like you get to run yours the way you want to. Hey, everybody joining us. So. Back to the story. So a couple months rolled by and the person, I hope they're not watching. Maybe they are. I don't really care because it's happened and it's a learning experience, hopefully for them to be a little bit more mature. If you could not afford the course, I would have preferred the person say, hey, Miss Kimmy, I bought the course. I really couldn't afford it. I enjoyed it. But can I get my money back or something or not even buy it up front and call me and say, hey, is there something I could work out with you rather than steal it? Because basically you stole the course at this point. You're a thief. There's no other way to say it. Now you stole my information. You stole my course, right? And again, I'm all about customer service. So I'm going to give you your money back. That one course is not going to stop me from paying my light bill because I don't live like that. I live beneath my means. So for people just like that, that want to play games. But I guess the part that really bugged me, it wasn't that they didn't like the course, which I knew wasn't true. But the next day, they got in another Facebook group and said, oh, I know how to notarize. I, oh, I got this. I got this. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I know. Like, I just see it. So then the person calls me a few months later and they say, hey, Miss Kimmy, I want to know, can I schedule a coaching corner with you? What? You want to you want me to coach you on something, but I thought you didn't like my course. So you know I want to get ready to let that go, right? So, oh no, no, no. I just didn't particularly care for that, but I love the way you teach. Well, that let me know too that you was a crook because if you really didn't like my stuff that much, why are you gonna come back for another product? Why? I'm just being honest with you. So this person actually stole my information and then want to come back for a coaching corner. So needless to say, guys. I did not do business with that person. And I told them, just like I just told you all, I'm clearly not the right person for you because you didn't like the other product. So I don't feel that I can coach you on anything else. Oh, no, 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 no. I know you can because I love the way you teach. Well, which one is it? So I don't usually discuss this type of thing, but because we're talking about refunds, I'm being fully transparent about even other parts of my business where the refund thing has come up. So again, don't be thinking y'all get ready to ask for refunds because there is no refund. It's a digital product. And you got the information in your head, you're learning, you're using it, et cetera. But for the sake of my name, my name is way more important than a $50 course, okay? So you got to think like that too. Even in my personal non better mobile notary services, my name of my business is my bread and butter. So if a, a client going to get mad over $25, 
I'm going to give it back to you. But guess what? I'm blocking you. You can never use my services again. You know, and I don't play the shadiness. I don't play that. Like you don't like like I just said with the other person with the actual notary. You know, so if you didn't like my services this time, don't call me when you're in a bind and say, oh, I really need you. Oh, no, we're done. You know, I'm I'm very clear about relationships like that. Not that I'm unforgiving because I'm very forgiving. But when it comes to business, you only get to burn me once. What's they? What do they say? Shame on you one time or something like that. Shame on you sex time. That little that little phrase, you know. So, yeah, I'll play. So anyway, that's my little rant about giving refunds. <laughs> so to sum it up in a nutshell, for those of you who are just joining us, would I give a refund? I would give a refund. I would. I haven't had to. But again, once I give you a refund, we are done. You can, I, you, we no longer do business together. What they say, we don't rock like that no more. No, we are done. We are done. So yeah, you don't want, I'm not the person you want to play with. All that smile and stuff. I'm real. I'm very transparent. I'm very real. But when it comes to refunding money, and this was a big amount of money I refunded. Matter of fact, I had the conversation with my friends. I'm going to say this. I'm going to get off the subject. But I, my friends happened to be visiting and they heard what was going on. And they was like, Kim, why you give her anything? I was like, because I want peace. Oh, thank you, Tanya. Fool me once, my fault. Fool me twice, your fault. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, my friends was like, why did you give her the money back? And I was like, because I want peace in my business. I can hear my mother, y'all. My mother was 87. Y'all know my mom from some of the videos. And my mother would have been like, give that her money and keep it moving. Okay. So I'm going to move on because I'm about to get real crazy. <laughs> okay, Alexis, did we ask you that question already? Would you give a refund? No. Or I just went on my tangent? No. I didn't no. ask you that. <laughs> Oh, okay, Alexis, would you give a refund? <laughs> yeah, everything everybody said, every, everything you said, yes, depending on the situation, like you said, my name is way more important, and I haven't had to, thankfully, I haven't had to um, in my business at all, so if it came about, definitely, here, just, just, let's, let's just go about our life, I'm with you, it's not worth it. You just stole my stuff. And then you want me to give you a coaching corner. So I caught the nerve. That's how you know sometimes for real. I'm going to say this, y'all. That's how you know sometimes people intent. Because if I ask you for a full-blown refund on a course, I'm not getting ready to call you to set up another training with you. That's why sometimes people just really don't have what we call, and I hate this expression, common sense. I don't like that because it may not be common to you. That might be where you from, that's how you, that's how you roll. That's how your family roll is always on a hustle, trying to scam somebody. You know what I'm saying? So what we say is common, like the average person would think, well, and then they had the nerves to call you for another coaching session. And they, you know, so anyway, that's that. Let's get to the comments guys. Cause we want to help you all out. So now we're going to take your comments in case you missed the beginning of our episode tonight. We talked about, um, all about the money. Should you do a refund? Should you do a prepayment? We talked about all that kind of stuff. So we're going to take your questions. Alexis is going to handle the chat for us. And before we do, I just want to make a couple of announcements. I already talked about it, but the online courses are 50% off. Coupon code is WIN23, W-I-N-23. And you can purchase them at notaryeducatorsllc.com. Don't forget to join the free email listing because that's how we're letting you know now about everything going on i put out an email today can anybody tell me like a one in the chat if you received the email today about going live and do you like that can you put a one in there if you received it a two if you did not if you're on the email list because now everything is going to be sending out that way so sign up for the free email list over at notary educators llc.com join our free facebook group which is also notary educators you get a lot of free resources over there. Brian did not get his email. Yes. I'm so happy. Hey, Tanita. That's a new name. Hey, W. Kirkland. Marjorie, what's going on? Hey, Waymore Services. Leslie, welcome, welcome. Brian, why you didn't get your email? Are you signed up, you and Stacy? Oh, Brian said YouTube notified him. Okay. Because sometimes YouTube does not notify. That's why we went to the email list. Not just so we can blast you with a lot of stuff, but we really want to keep you informed as to when we go live and stuff. So if you have not joined the Facebook group, <clears throat> also that's completely free. 
A uh, couple more announcements. Angela started an apostille education station. So that's going to be a monthly. Um, I got to find out, Marjorie, can I do a text also? Let me find out about that. I don't know how to set it up yet, but I'll work on that and put it on my list. Because I like text messages too. Yeah, I do. Um, but in the meantime, check your emails, okay? If you see anything from us, it's not always just selling something. Matter of fact, it's not. I had a good notary tip in there today and uh, a couple things in there. Um, Angela's Education, Apostille Education Station is a monthly membership with Angela. And she goes over the more complex things of notary, um, about apostilles rather, I'm sorry. And it's not a training, but it's just like if you already know something about apostilles and you want ongoing education that's going to be with angela so check out the website for more details about that and don't forget just in case you don't know i wrote a book for every single state start your notary business you may have the gray book so if you do you don't need these but one for california we got texas every state has their own book michigan um florida every state i don't have all 50 right here but this is virginia so whatever, if you're starting your business, you may need the book. If you have a notary business and it's not thriving the way you want, you need to go back and read this book from beginning to end, okay? It will definitely help you. So we're going to take y'all questions. Thank you for being patient as I went through the announcements. Um, Let's see here. Frank, hey, Frank, hit the like button, guys. It's 34 people, so I should have at least 34 likes. Okay. Thank y'all. I had to say that. Lexus, let's do this. What's going on in the chat? All right, let's see where we left off at. Let me see. Yeah, that would be um maybe maybe Tara talked about maybe Tara. Where you at? Which um uh, well we kind of talked about that to travel a mile. I think I did say that. Let's see. We are at where we where are we? Welcome everybody who's just now joining us. We are at are we find six fifteen? Yeah. Okay. Shannon B. Hey Shannon B. What's going on? All right. Shannon B says I offered a refund for a canceled appointment and the customer told me no and to pay it forward to another customer. Mm. I love that. I do too. I love that they're clients. Now, see, that's the kind of client I'm going to save in my phone. Yeah. I'm going to star them. And if anything they need, I got them. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? I did have that happen before too. I had a guy, I was supposed to be a witness. I'm not a witness. Uh, I was supposed to administer an oath only for him. If you have not seen my oath only video, that's another service you can offer is oath only. Oath only. O-A-T-H only. Um, sometimes people have a, de a deposition or something they have to be in court for, and they'll call you as the notary to issue the oath only. So I do have a video on how to do that. Check it out on my YouTube channel. And he called me for that, and they actually canceled his court date, and he let me keep the payment because he was that was a repeat. And he said, no, you put me on your calendar, and I really appreciated that. So I just thanked him, you know, really thanked him for that, for being so kind. Okay, next. All right. Uh, next, Marcel says, never had to issue a refund. I would. Depend. Yeah. Total agreement. Tanya Bruton says, I have given a refund before. Um, oh, Tanya, may I ask if you don't mind if it's not too personal, why did you have to give a refund if you don't mind sharing? She said, And I know that you go on YouTube and stuff, Tanya. If you don't mind coming up and talk about what happened, I would love to have you. Let me know if you mind coming up and talk about what happened when you had to issue a refund. She said it down here. Oh, she did? Oh, my, my mm -hmm. bad. Go ahead. She said, my square charged the client twice. I saw the error, so I refunded it immediately. She was appreciative. I caught it and fixed it. Okay, cool. I thought it was something a little bit more dramatic. <laughs> 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 we do it. What they call it? Reality TV over here. I thought it was something like, I messed up her thing and she went home. <laughs> All right, Lexus. What else we got? Uh, Monique says, it depends. Mm -hmm. Stacey Watson says, I agree. Monique was saying it was it's not worth the headache. No, mm -hmm. it's not. And then W. Kirkland says, I ordered FD258 cards, and they're supposed to measure 8x8, eight eight, but are a little wider and won't fit in my card holder. Has anyone had this issue, this problem? So, W. Clark Kirkland, you probably, do you have that board that people use to roll fingerprints? Because I see a lot of notaries ordering that little kit from Amazon 
with the board and you stick it in there and all that. You don't need that board, guys. You can save money. All you need is the cards and the ink fingerprinting. I do have a whole ink fingerprinting course. And you do not need to carry that big old board around with you. All I have is my cards. And I have something, a hard service to roll them on. I have a free video on YouTube. But again, if you want to do it like a pro, the ink fingerprinting course is half off at notaryeducatorsllc.com, 50% off. And that way you can learn how to roll, fill out the card and everything like a pro. So you probably have that big wooden thing that people carry. It reminds me of when I was in school and they used to put the bathroom key on a big wooden piece of wood. You know, you don't have to carry that around in your notary bag. I mean, if you already have it, then of course use it, but you don't need that. All right, next. Oh, so I guess to answer the question, I'm sorry, Alexis. So to answer the question, I've never had that problem because I don't use that little wooden board that you slide the card in. I just let the card be free on top of a clipboard or something hard. So I don't, I would not recommend cutting the card to fit your thing that you have though. They may make the card invalid. So I would not cut the card. Ready? Yes. To Tanita Davis says, hello. Hey, Latoya. Tanita. Hey. Latoya Anitri says, we love you, Kimmy, but you're too nice. No, thank you, Latoya. I try not. I am nice, but girl, don't let me talk about the refunds. You saw a different side, didn't you? <laughs> Sharon Robinson says, yep, they stole your course. Oh, the course share and got over in another Facebook group. And that's what made me so mad. Here I go one more time. Got over in another Facebook group and said, oh, I know how to notarize now. I got this. What? Okay. And then Monique um, Kanata says, maybe you could have offered her a payment plan if she couldn't afford it. I totally agree, Monique. I would have been open to anything other than stealing it and then saying it wasn't any good and you go somewhere else and said it was that you got this so and then on top of that i didn't even tell y'all this part they bought somebody else's more expensive course that didn't teach them how to notarize see i believe in starting at the basics and i had this whole conversation in another video recently that sometimes people buy these more expensive courses and all this stuff thinking oh it's all luxurious and all this or whatever and it's not teaching you the basics i believe in the basics first so I always say you might didn't buy a bad course, but it's just not a course you needed at the time. So she started with the basics, which was me. Then she took that refund and bought another course. Also, I forgot that piece. Can't make it up. Can't make it up if I wanted to. If it hadn't happened to me and somebody was telling me that, another YouTuber or something, I would have been like, really? And I've heard horror stories about people and their courses and stuff. But until it actually happens to you, it's like, really? That happened? Yeah, it happens. <laughs> so sometimes you see a YouTuber or somebody going off is because they're frankly just set up. But I am been so blessed that I have a great audience. I love you guys. I appreciate you rocking with us, as they say, um, <laughs> you know, and being very loyal for real. It's nothing that we won't do to help you guys. And I feel that from you all. It's been nothing but a pleasure from day one. I'm coming up on my two year anniversary being on YouTube in June. So I am just so appreciative for each and every one of you, for real. We're going to do a celebration um, in June. We're also going to do one on our Facebook group because we're over 3,600. Our Facebook group is growing like crazy. If you have not joined, please join our Facebook group. It is out of control. It, people are doing some amazing things over there. All right, Lexus. All right. HP Lifestyle Lessons and Fun says, I got my email today. I have to be sworn in within 45 days. I'm scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. What you scared of? What? So normally when people say they're scared, it's because of a lack of training. So let's see. What's the problem, HP lifestyle? What you scared of? What are you scared of? I know it's gonna be, you're going to be a little scared because I'm still scared, y'all, when that phone rang. I'm like, what they want? Right. <laughs> but I got a couple videos on don't be scared. As I'm saying, we scare sometimes, but that's human. So what are yes. you what are you afraid of? Let us know. All right, Lexus. All right. Tyra Wright says, Wow, just joined. This is crazy. I am so sorry to hear that. Talking about the course. Yeah. Hey Tyra, welcome. Go yes. back and watch the replay too if you missed anything for those who are just joining us. And then Tanya Bruton says, uh, fool me once, my fault, fool me twice, your fault. And then she says, I got it back first. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that's okay. We knew what you meant. Right. <laughs> Majority down and says, Kimmy, you were correct in how you handled it. Hey, Marjorie. Thank you. I agree. And Linda Reyes says, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That's it, Linda. Fool me <laughs> once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Shame on you for being what you did, you know. But the next time, it's like you knew that person was going to do that. It isn't a little thing somebody says while Alexis is taking care of the baby. Isn't there something when it says um, a little illustration, guys, about a snake and people play with the snake and you play with the snake and then the snake bit the person. And then the person says, well, you knew I was a snake when you picked me up. Right. You ever heard that before? Am I really dating myself? You heard that before, Alexis? I didn't even hear you. What you say? The snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing about a snake. It's an illustration about a snake. And then the, the, the person's playing with the snake, playing with the snake. And the snake turn around and bites the person. And the, per the snake tell the person, well, you knew I was a snake when you picked me up. Oh, or something to that effect. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so thank y'all. Um, What else? You want me to go or you got it? I got it. Uh, Tanita Tani Davis says, some people are just get overs. They will always lose, though. Tanita, I felt the same way. I felt the same way. Because I was thinking to myself, if you do that to me, you're going to do that in your business some kind of way. That's your nature. That's who you are. Whoever you are at your core. What's up, little man? That's who you are to your core. I totally agree. So if you do that with me, you'll do it with somebody else. Most people... Um, you got a few crooks out there or whoever that's good at playing what they say two faced and all that kind of stuff, but not I have a hard time doing that. I'd rather just be straight up with you because I'm not good at playing the game, you know. I'm I'm not good at that. Mm -mm. And then next is they were just answering the one and two question. Um uh, Jory Downing says, I do prefer a text. Oh, we already talked about that. And then Latoya Nietzsche says, I received the email and the YouTube notification. Oh, very good, Latoya. Thank you for letting me know that, too, guys. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Frank says, hello from Mobile Notary from Lower Alabama. Sorry, I'm late. Y'all hit the like button. Yes, Frank, you always remind us. Uh, Latoya Nietzsche says, my general notary work is picking up. I'm so happy. Thank you for your guidance. That's awesome. Oh, Latoya, that makes my day. We are so excited. And we had a Monday, um, not a Monday night. We had a March notary meetup. If you guys missed that video. Um, so it was one of the things you could sign up for. It was free. And then I posted the replay. And that went absolutely amazing. The testimonies in the group on, um, we had that Sunday night. So April date has not been released yet. But I will say this, guys, please don't sign up if you can't come because it's only a space for 90 people. And if you sign up and you don't come, just wait for the replay because that means somebody could have been there live that couldn't make, you know, they couldn't make it because it's only 90 slots on Zoom. Okay, so I do a free event because I don't want to put that cost onto you guys. Um, so we try to provide as much as we can for free. So it's 90 slots per month for the monthly meetup on zoom but if you take a spot and 15 more people and then they don't show up that's really not fair to the other people that could have came in person and maybe had their question answered okay so try not to sign up if you already know you have a previous engagement i will always put those on youtube and let you know in facebook and via email and everything uh, i'll try to do that via email too because i didn't do that this time put the link in there for the replay but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll try to do that in the future, but we really want to make sure that those who can take advantage of the live can be there. And then if you can't, again, you could always catch the replay. Okay. Um, and April's date is not out yet. So give me a, uh, I got to get with Alexis and Angela. Angela couldn't make it tonight too. I'm so sorry. We're 40 minutes into this and I'll let you know, I, clearly she's not here, <laughs> but, um, as soon as we get the April date out, you can sign up for that at notary educators llc.com okay but congratulations latoya congrats right and w kirkland says can you answer my fingerprint card question fd258 cards are wider than eight by eight and won't fit in my holder have you had this problem oh i did answer w kirkland i don't know if you were not listening or at that time you had to step away or something i was oh, saying yeah. i've i've never had that problem but 
Oh, I see you answering yeah, okay. the in the bottom. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, yeah, I did answer it. Yeah, I've never had that problem. So don't cut the card, though. I do want to reiterate, don't cut the card because it may make it invalid when they go to use it, okay? Yep, use a clipboard. So you bought that board? Just confirm for me. Did you buy that board? Oh, yeah, I see it right now. I just have the holder, not the board. Yeah, you don't even need that holder, huh? You don't need the holder or the board. Don't buy anything extra, guys. I know you probably didn't know it, but you do not need to buy the holder or the board. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, it's like a long wooden piece of board, and then you can roll the fingerprint. You can slide the fingerprint card in there. It's really to help the card to stay stable, but you don't need all that. All you need is a clipboard, ink pad, and a um, FD258 card, okay? And again, check out my fingerprint course. And if you have not added that to your business, you should, that and I-9. So visit Notary Educators for all additional services you can be adding to your to your business. Okay, let's go, Alexis. All right, next, uh, BB Girl says hello, hello. Hey, BB Girl. And NW says, what's a good beginner's course? Notarize like a pro, because you got to know how to stamp those papers. If you don't know how to notarize, don't be buying no marketing class. Don't be buying nobody's Ron class. Don't buy none of that extra stuff. Building business credit 101 and getting business con. What is that? Um, government contracts is another popular one. Don't buy none of that stuff and you don't know how to notarize. Okay. Notarize like a pro is the first course you need. Okay. If you need an actual plan, though, it would be our pleasure to walk you through a plan. Just go to notary educators and fill out, um, fill out contact me or something. Okay, but it's pretty clear the course selections. We also have live trainings. Oh, I forgot. I'm glad you mentioned that. We have live trainings up for the month of March, guys. Welcome to those of you who are just joining us. Uh, we have all the March classes live training. It's been a while since we did live training. We try to keep it small, so maybe five students to each class. I have a class. Alexis has a class, and Angela has a couple. She has our apostille training and then regular general notary um, class or basic notarization class. And Alexis has her long signing class. So all the dates are up. So check that out over at Notary Educators LLC. Okay. And Monique Kanata says, ain't no good going to come to that person from stealing. And also congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yep. No good. No good. And it, W. Kirkland says, I was approved today to do Fidelity National Title Signing. Yes, that's a big deal, W. Kirkland. Very good. So for those of you who do not know, certain companies require a little extra um, credentialing and stuff like that. So Fidelity approved is a big deal. Um, there are companies that help you to get that status, but it's not very... Um, it's not everybody's not going to help you get that. And I'm not Fidelity approved, guys. So I really can't even walk you through the process. I was trying to become Fidelity approved, but I don't even think they had much stuff in my area. So um, if you need more information about that, I probably would have you do a Google search because I don't even know anybody that teaches that. Uh, but Fidelity approved just means that um, you can work with a certain title company and it's only for that company. So, for example, if I work with ABC over here, and I work with one, two, three over here. Both ABC has to get me fidelity approved, and also one, two, three has to get me fidelity approved. It doesn't apply cross across every single signing company. Each signing company has to help you get that um, special status. Okay, so again, Google it because I do not know. I am not fidelity approved. I tried to get the process again through one company that said they was going to help me, and they never did. So it's cool. I still work as a signing agent without being Fidelity approved. You do not have to be Fidelity approved in order to work, just for those who may not know, okay? All right. And Latoya says, I will be at the next one. I missed this last one, but I caught the replay. Oh, good. Good, Latoya. Thank you. Appreciate it. That replay is doing actually very well. I mean, we really had a good conversation that's why I like the Zoom versus the Monday Night Live. I really do because the Zoom allows you to ask your question in real time. Um, so, you know, we do these lives and I, and I enjoy answering your questions like this. 
but it's still something about that face to face. So that's once a month. And then we do these lives. So I'm going to pop on Friday. Hopefully Angela can join us too. And we'll do part two of the frequently asked questions about money. Cause I still got three more questions we're going to answer. Um, okay. Alexis next. Next Tanya Bruton says, I have a question. I do a lot of power of attorneys at nursing homes, but the signers sometimes really have issues seeing the paperwork with glasses and a magnifying glass. Is there anything else I can do to help? No, no, nah, because I would not get into reading the, the document to them. Hold What's on, your thought? Uh huh. <laughs> the rest of the question was help them see where to sign. Oh, where, I don't even see that. Oh, that was in the next box. Okay, I see it. Uh huh. So those little cards. Um, my mom was visually impaired, so there's a card that you can buy really cheap online, and um, it's like a guider, and you put it in the spot, and they sign within the little plastic. It's like a little plastic card, and they can sign within that little area. It's about the size of a credit card holder. I actually have it on the supply list at Notary Educators. So go to notaryeducatorsllc.com and click the notary supply list. It'll take you to my Amazon store. And it's a signature guide. Um, signature guide is what it's called. So like Alexa said, it's a little box and it'll guide them where to sign. They can't sign outside the box. Well, they could if they really write hard, but it kind of helps guide them. So yes, that's what you can use if you don't already have that. I have a cute little red one. It does come in a metal one also. So check out my supply list. Good question. And that's good customer service, too. If you realize that your clients need something to go ahead and invest in your business, that's excellent. Excellent. Next. Next is HP Lifestyle. Uh, I'm scared because I don't have any experience. I think I'll purchase your course. Yes, I think that will help you, HP Lifestyle. And um, the course is excellent because um, we teach it just like we do here, self-paced, um, very clear. And we're also having a live training this month, too. So if you can catch the live training and you're brand new, that might be another option for you, too. Um, just see what works better for your budget, um, because the live training, of course, is different. It's live, but the self-pace is excellent. I mean, people have really been able to do some things with, with all of the self-paced courses. I must say myself, they're pretty good. So, yeah, either way, though, you should be fine. And then we're here for you. That's why I want you to join the Facebook group. Join the email list, et cetera, and take advantage of all the free resources. These lives that we do, we try to be very, very accessible, okay? Now, we all do work and have our own businesses. Angela has her business. I have my business. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Alexis has her business. So we do try to be as accessible as we can. The best way to contact us normally is going to be either via the Facebook group or email over at Notary Educators, and we definitely will get back with you. Um, let's see. Next. Next is Linda Reyes. I just took my oath last week. Was not nervous at all. However, I took it where people go to get their marriage license. So there, there I was amongst all the couples. Mind you, I live in Vegas. Ah. <laughs> hey, Linda. So it was a lot of love in the air, huh? <laughs> well, congratulations on taking your oath, though. It's congratulations. And you should be able to get that money out in Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I do have a book for the state of Nevada also from uh, Alaska, Alabama, uh, Michigan, Wyoming, New York, Washington, D.C., Virginia, Michigan, Texas, every state, all 50, including Washington, D.C. There's a book for you. OK, Tanya says she's going to get that um, signature thing. What's next, Alexis? Uh, then she goes, says, I set up my Google business page and now I can't find it. What did I do wrong? Um, make sure you are in the top right hand corner. There's a little bubble. Make sure you're in the correct email address. Sometimes if you have multiple Gmail accounts, you might be in this Gmail, but you signed up with it in the other one. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is next to the little icon. If you have a picture for Gmail, it'll be a picture. If if you don't have a picture, it'll be um, a letter of whatever your email address is. So next to that is nine dots. Um, click that, go to business, and it'll pop up your business page as well. Very good. 
Very good. And for those of you who are just joining, Alexis did release a new Google My Business course. Because a lot of people say, well, you don't have to pay nobody to set that up. You can go right online. If you can't figure it out online, I have about six videos that are free. But after that, Alexis has a course that takes you step by step to set up not only your Google page, but also a free basic website with Google. Okay, so you'll really be going. If you need additional after that, you can always get on her calendar. But we got you covered all the way around, okay? Hey, Bryce. Bryce said he did his first apostille birth certificate to a hey country. Very, oh, very good. Hey, Linda. She said she purchased it. Thank you. Go, Bryce. I'm so proud of you. Excellent, excellent. So um, don't forget to add apostilles because that is some good money. I'm proud of you, Bryce. Bryce has been in the coaching corner and doing some things out in Texas. All right, guys. Well, it looks like we got everybody's um, questions. I always like to try to make sure we ask answer everything. So we'll give you a couple going once, going twice, anything else. If not, I am going to say good night on behalf of Notary Life with Kimmy. Oh, I forgot one more thing, guys. Now, no pressure. No pressure. But I started a new YouTube channel for those of you who do not know. It's called Healthy Life with Kimmy. Healthy Life with Kimmy. And I am in the process. I don't know if you guys remember back in um, December when we were talking about our goals for 2023. I said, I'm, I'm going to get healthy in 2023 and I'm going to learn the apostille business. So I started my journey for apostilles and now I'm about to work on my health. It should have been the other way around. But now I'm working on my health. So it's called Healthy Life with Kimmy. So please join me over there if you would like. Don't join just because, because that doesn't help me. I prefer you join if you actually are on a health you know, journey yourself or you're just curious about what I'm doing. That's fine. But don't just subscribe just because, because that doesn't help my channel. But if you're interested in what I'm doing, I am doing Weight Watchers for those of you who may or may not be doing it yourselves. But that's the plan that I've chosen to try to get my health together. So join me over there if you'd like to. Again, it's Healthy Life with Kimmy, okay? So just Google it. It'll pop up on YouTube, uh, Healthy Life with Kimmy. Well, guys, until next time, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. We really enjoyed our Q&A. Join us for part two on Friday. Let me tell you what we're going to answer on Friday right quick, just so you can know. So Friday, we're going to talk about should you charge a waiting fee? Should you charge a credit card processing fee? Should you charge your client for using Cash App? And should you show the tip screen? Hmm. Interesting, right? We're going to answer all four of those on Friday night. So I don't know what time yet because I got to make sure, you know, if I have a client or whatever, because I am a working notary. I'm not just a YouTuber. Neither are Alexis or Angela. <laughs> we actually work, y'all. Well, so we got to see what our, yeah, we gotta see what our schedules look like. But those are the four questions that we are going to answer on Friday night. So hopefully you can join us back on Friday, okay? So until next time, I'm going to say peace out. Notary Life with Kimmy. Healthy Life with Kimmy. Notary Educators. Alexis? Yes. And don't forget the Google business course is 60% off until Friday. Use code Google and go to our website, Notary Educators LLC. And we'll see uh, you on Friday. Yes. Bye, guys. It's been our pleasure. Hey, Linnell. See you later. Good night. Bye, Yvonne. Thank you for joining us. Good night, Tanya. Bye, guys. Thank you again for listening to the Notary Life with Kimmy podcast. We would love to be a part of your notary journey. Please visit us at notaryeducatorsllc.com for all of your notary training needs. Also, please feel free to join the Notary Life with Kimmy YouTube channel, where Kimmy has over 400 videos that will help you to grow and build a successful notary business. Until the next episode, we wish you much success on your journey. Bye.